Madam President, I know that the subject that we are on now is the START Treaty, and it is a very important subject. Uh, I appreciate so much all of the debate that, that we've had. I hope that we will be able to go forward and allow people to have amendments within this time, uh, because it's a huge issue for our country. Uh, I want to speak on a different subject right now because it is so timely. Uh, because today, the Federal Communications Commission voted three to two to impose new regulations on the Internet. This is an unprecedented power grab by the unelected members of the Federal Communications Commission, spearheaded by its chairman. The FCC is attempting to push excessive government regulation of the Internet through without congressional authority. These actions threaten the very future of this incredible technology. The FCC pursuit of net neutrality regulations involves claiming authority under the Communications Act that they do not have. Congress did not provide the FCC authority to regulate how Internet service providers manage their networks. Not anywhere in the Communications Act nor any other statute administered by the Commission. Adopting and imposing net neutrality regulations is, in effect, legislating. It takes away the appropriate role of Congress in determining the proper regulatory framework for the fastest growing sector of our economy. The real world impact of the announced intention of the FCC today is that it will be litigated it will take 18 months to two years to sort through uh, the briefings and the court decisions, and it will probably go to the Supreme Court of the United States. In the meantime, capital investment will slow in core communications networks, and I cannot think of a worse possible time for that as we attempt to create jobs to fuel a recovery from the most significant recession in years. Elected representatives should determine if regulation is necessary in this area. Hearings would bring opposing parties to the table. The process would be open. Instead, an unelected and unaccountable group of regulators are creating authority to intervene in an area that represents one-sixth of the nation's economy. I want to go through a few of the specific provisions in this FCC order. The first one is an order to require broadband providers like Comcast and AT&T to allow subscribers to send and receive any lawful internet traffic, to go where they want, to say what they want, to use any non-harmful online devices or applications they want to use. Now, this is not bad. These principles are widely supported. I don't object, neither, neither would probably anyone. However, these principles are already in use. We don't need a big regulatory intervention to accomplish these principles. And it is the rest of the order that is diametrically opposed to this statement of openness and freedom. It installs a government arbiter to force their idea of freedom on the users of the Internet and the companies that are trying to make the Internet the economic engine of America. The first provision that deals with this is that net networks must be transparent. It says that networks must be transparent about how they manage their networks, i.e., decisions about engineering, routing, degrading service. Transparency requirements usually translate to reporting and consumer disclosure requirements that are heavily prescribed and expensive to comply with. Possible disclosure of proprietary information affecting competition. The real world impact of this is higher cost to consumers. The Commission will increase regulatory reporting and consumer disclosure requirements as a result of this provision, and the cost will be passed along to, of course, the consumers in the form of more expensive services. 
The second provision is that you may not unreasonably discriminate. The FCC's order states that providers may not unreasonably discriminate against lawful Internet traffic. That sounds fine, but the devil is in the details. The term is vaguely defined in the order, and how the FCC interprets and enforces what is unreasonable will determine how limiting this restriction is. For instance, if a provider notices that a small number of users are sharing huge file dumps that are leading to congestion on the network, and determines that slowing down those connections would relieve the congestion for the majority of other users, the FCC would have the right under this order to determine that such an action is unreasonable, particularly if they are picking winners and losers within those decisions. The real-world impact? It would diminish the company's flexibility in managing their own services. Unreasonable discrimination could undermine the provider's ability to manage their networks and guarantee all the users a high quality of service. Companies that build and maintain the networks that make up the internet, internet need the flexibility to manage the exploding demand for services on their networks. Regrettably, this order curtails that by establishing that the FCC would have an approval portal that companies would have to pass through just to manage their day-to-day -day operations. Surely there is a better way. The next provision is that they must justify new specialized services. Under the FCC's orders, providers would now have to come to the FCC in order to offer consumers a new service, something that would be creative and innovative. So instead of offering it and having the competitive advantage from something new, they have to now expose it to all of their competitors by going through a regulatory hearing at the FCC. Let me give you an example of what could happen. A hospital might want to work with a provider like Verizon to offer a new service for Verizon subscribers such as telemedicine that allows patients at home to interact with their doctors via high-definition video and uninterruptible remote medical monitoring. In order to do this, Verizon might have to prioritize that telemedicine traffic ahead of regular internet traffic to ensure the appropriate quality of service and particularly if there is a life-threatening situation. The FCC order allows the Commission to determine on a case-by-case -case basis whether such prioritization is actually unreasonable discrimination because presumably the hospital that is offering the service would be giving better treatment to that telemedicine consumer than the user's regular traffic. So going through that whole process in order to offer that service is a burden that we do not need and that will stifle the innovation that really has marked the internet and the explosion of the opportunities there. The Commission says it wants innovation to occur, but the language of the order clearly discourages innovation by forcing companies to pass through a government regulatory turnstile to determine whether a particular service, an innovative service, something new that might uh, be a new competitive advantage, something new for quality of life, whether it should be allowed. This puts the FCC in the position of picking winners and losers among the new innovative services. And it certainly slows down the opportunity to have new things coming on the market in what is usually a fast-paced uh, economic investment. In some cases, this may be enough to discourage providers from entering into special arrangements necessary uh, to offer services like the foregoing. It is cumbersome, and furthermore, especially, it is unnecessary. The next provision is to tread lightly. They, they say they will tread lightly on wireless services for now. The order will treat wireless broadband services more lightly than wireline broadband services at least for now. The FCC reserves in this order, which 
is taken without congressional authority, in my opinion, and certainly the courts will litigate and make decisions. The FCC reserves the right to regulate wireless just as harshly in the future as they are attempting to regulate wireline. For now, however, wireless providers will have more leeway to innovate and manage their networks, but how much investment are, the, are they going to make for the long term if they don't know what the FCC might foresee in the future that needs fixing, even if it isn't apparently broken? The real world impact is that wireless is the fastest growing area of communications markets. The threat that the Commission might later apply the prohibitions in its order today to this marketplace is a major concern. Madam President, I want to commend the two dissenting members of the Commission uh, in the vote today, Rob McDowell and Meredith Atwell Baker. They each did op-eds, one in the Wall Street Journal and one in the Washington Post, about, I would say, the common theme that this is a solution where there is no problem. We have an open Internet, Madam President. We have an Internet that is working. It does not need the heavy hand of government. It does not need a government prism upon which to determine uh, if the Internet uh, providers are uh, doing a service. We have a marketplace and the marketplace is working. This is a time for Congress to take a stand. These regulations will raise uncertainty about the methods and practices communications companies may use to manage their networks. Heavy-handed regulation threatens investment and innovation in broadband services, placing valuable American jobs at risk. Why would this be happening in a, in a recession where we are trying to increase jobs, where we are trying to stop the, the trajectory of unemployment in our country? We need to lay off, and it is time for Congress to take a stand. Individuals and businesses alike are rightfully concerned about government attempts to seize control of the Internet. Senator Ensign, who is the ranking member of the uh, subcommittee on commerce, I am the ranking member of the Commerce Committee, together we're going to submit a resolution of disapproval under, congressional review, under the Congressional Review Act in an effort to overturn this troubling regulatory overreach by the FCC. I think it is time for Congress to say that we have not delegated this authority to the FCC. Uh, the Communications Act, uh, the FCC tried to do this in another part of the Act. They were struck down by the courts. Now they have gone to a different interpretation in a different section of the Act to try to gain the capability to obstruct the freedom of access to the Internet. It is a huge and serious uh, issue that I hope Congress will take the reins and say to the FCC, if we need regulation in this area, Congress will do it. We are elected. We are accountable. People can vote with what they believe is the, the right approach by what we do. The FCC is not accountable to the people of our country. And uh, yes, they're accountable to the president, and the votes were uh, the presidential appointees uh, of this administration. It is another big government intervention where we do not need to suppress innovation. What we need is to embrace innovation so that we can create jobs in this country with the freedom that has marked the economic vitality of America for over 200 years. So, Madam President, uh, we will have a resolution of disapproval in the appropriate time in the next session of Congress, and I look forward to working with other members of Congress to take the reins in this issue. It is a congressional responsibility. Thank you, Madam President, and I yield the floor. Madam President. Senator. Madam President, I understand.